Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna build a API gateway that invokes two different lambdas. So this is what we'll build at the end of this video. We will have two different routes, a get value and, and an is even route. Inside of both of these routes here, we're gonna have one method. One will have a get, that will return a value. One will have a post. You can see here in both cases, we are integrating a lambda and we'll invoke the lambda when this route is hit. And then we'll use some sort of API client to test it out. I'm gonna use Insomnia in this case, but you could use Postman or anything else uh, to then test these routes out. We won't get into more advanced topics of authorization or other things like that, but this will hopefully get you started with building APIs on AWS. So let's go back here and let's create a new API and we'll build this. Uh, when you click new API, you'll see you'll get a few different options. Um, in this case, we want just a REST API. So I'll click build on the REST API, create a new API, we'll give it a name. I'll just call this one is even API, which is one of the routes we'll build. Um, and then we'll go ahead and leave that as, as is. And for the API endpoint type, you'll see we have three different options. In this case, we'll leave it as regional. Let's go ahead and create the API. So once we create it, um, this is the page we'll land on. We'll have a default path of just the route. Now, if you wanted to add different routes on the, the route of the API, you can do so down here by creating a method and adding here. In this case though, we're gonna add a new resource, which will create a new path for us. And the first one I'm gonna create is just a path that goes to get dash value. And we'll leave cores off, keep things simple, and we'll create the resource. Now you'll see we have a new path of get dash value. Once we have a resource created, we can come down here to our methods and create a new method. We'll create a method type. In this case, we're just retrieving a value, so we'll do a get method. We will do a lambda function integration because we want to integrate with a lambda. But you can see here we have many other options we could do as well. But in this video, we'll keep it with just the Lambda function. And below that, you'll see we have a Lambda proxy integration uh, selection here. So will toggle. Make sure this is turned on. Um, if this is not selected, this will cause, this will make things much harder for you. Uh, if this is selected, it will send all the request data, the headers, the body, everything um, as, a, as th um, a structured event. Uh, if you don't have that on, it, it makes things much difficult. You have to do things how the, the old way of doing things, which is a little harder than just having it turned on, having this thing selected right here. Okay, and now we get to the Lambda function, but we haven't created our Lambda function yet. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna duplicate this tab. I'm going to then jump into, uh, I'll go back to the homepage, I guess here, and I'll click on Lambda. You can either search for it up here in the search bar, or you can find it in the recently visited if you've been there recently. Click on it here, and I'm gonna go ahead and create a new function. All this function is gonna do is retrieve a value. So we'll keep this very simple. Um, we'll call it just retrieve value. Uh, we're going to keep it in Python, so we'll do Python 3.12, ARM64, and we'll create that function. Okay, and then once we have this function created, you'll get this really basic uh, function right here. Um, I'm going to keep this almost exactly the same. I will delete this to do. I'm going to change the body to instead of, of putting hello world, we're going to put uh, a dictionary of value with the key or with the value of 100. So all we're going to do here is we're going to return this value 100 when we hit this, this endpoint. So it's not gonna do a whole lot. Make sure we go ahead and deploy that. Now we should have this new Lambda function available to use. Back in our Lambda choice here, you'll see we have a few different ones here. I'm gonna click on retrieve value. Now I can go ahead and hit create method. And now you'll see under our get value, we have one method of get. So now we should be able to make a get request to get dash value and then get value set to 100. Before I can actually test it, I need to deploy it. So I hit deploy API. You'll see under stage here, I have no stages. So let's go ahead and create a new stage. Uh, stages will allow you to kind of like separate your code into different sort of um, environments almost, like you can have a test environment or a production environment. So in this case, I'm gonna create a test stage that will allow me to deploy it, deploy it to test, and then I can um, test everything there. Okay, so now with the stage uh, set up there, if you want to set up your CloudWatch logs, you can do so right here. I'm going to go ahead and leave that as is. And now that I have a stage created, I can go back to my resources. I can hit deploy API to test and hit deploy. And now the deployment is active for tests. So now we should be able to test this API. So I'm going to open up Insomnia and I'll pull it over here. So we will have, um, I did this from an old request, but we can ignore this value for now. Um, we want to go ahead and create a new request get requests and pass in the URL. Now, what is the URL? Well, if we go to our stage down here to the get, we click on it, we'll see we have this invoked URL. 
Um, this is goes to the uh, URL for the, the uh, API gateway test and also has git value, which is the route that has this git request on it. So I copy this, I paste this right here, make sure it's a git request, make sure you go to your headers and delete all headers. In this case, we don't have any headers. And we send that request. You see we're getting an error, internal server error. So why is that? So the way to debug this, we're gonna go ahead and go back to our retrieve value lambda and look at the logs for it. And that should give us a better idea on what's failing. Go to the CloudWatch logs. And after this loads here, I'm going to then find my most recent log, which should be from around the time I ran it. And we're getting a syntax error. Body JSON dumps the value and that's it. Um, what happened to my code here? Oh, did I put value 100 in here? Let's pretty sure we put value 100 and deploy those changes. And now we will run this again. And we will send that request. And it gets value 100. Okay. So I must have just forgot to type that in or it didn't go in. Um, if I caught that, but that should fix that problem. Uh, now we get value set to 100 when we run that. Okay. So now we have our first route done. We successfully added a new stage or a new. We successfully added a new resource path and then added a method to that resource path. Now let's go ahead and do this again. Let's take it one step further. Let's go ahead and create a new resource path, but then add a post method on it. So back on our resources tab here on the left, I'll create a new resource. This will be is dash even. Uh, leave course turned off for this example. We'll create that. We'll add a new method down here. We'll add a method of post and a function. And now, once again, we need to create another Lambda function for this request here. So let's go back to functions. Let's create a new function. We'll call this function is even. Once again, we'll keep it in Python. So Python 3.12, ARM64. Um, and then we'll go ahead and create that function. Okay. So uh, first, I'm going to go ahead and write this function. This one should be a little bit more confusing. So hopefully, uh, this will make sense. But We'll need to access a few different things that we didn't use last time. So we have these two values, event and context. All of our information will be sent through the event uh, variable. So the headers, the body, everything, because we use the proxy uh, for that. When we select it over here, we'll turn this on when we actually uh, complete this step here. Um, that will send everything through this event right here. We can access it inside of our code. But for now, for basic testing, I'm going to just do it without that and just pass in a test event through here, like how we did in previous videos. Um, if you've ever tested LAN before, this is, will probably be how you tested it first. Um, we'll, do, we'll do that first to make sure everything's working. So I'm going to start by getting the value from that event test JSON. So we can do number equals, and then we'll do event.get the value. And then once we have that value from the event, we can then determine if it is an even number. If it is an even number, we'll return true. If it's not, we'll return false. So we can do is even equals, and this will be done by doing int number. So we're going to take the number, convert it to an integer if it's not already. And then we're going to do modulus two double equals zero. So now this is just like a Boolean expression. Um, if this number you know, divide by two, if the remainder is equal to zero, then this will return true, else it turns false. And so that will give us whether or not the number is even or not, because if it's divisible by two, it's even. Now that we have that done, uh, we can go down into our return here and we'll return a few different things. I'll also return headers this time, just to show you how you can do that. Um, and we'll also want to return a content type set to application slash JSON like that. Um, and then the body uh, will we'll then, instead of doing hello lambda, we will then just do um, is underscore even, and set that to is even. So we'll have a body of is even, which we have curly braces around this as well. We'll have a body of is even, and then either true or false in the body of the response. Okay, let's go ahead and deploy this real quick and we'll test it. So we'll deploy and then come here and configure test event. We'll do test and then we'll change all this. We want one key in here of value. 
set the value of that key to be two, for example. We'll save that and then we'll test it. Um, we're getting an error. Did I forget a comma somewhere? I did. I forgot to put a comma after our headers. We'll have to play that once more and try this again. Okay, and we'll test this. Uh, and now you'll see we get this body of is even set to true. I change this number in the event. So if I go to my figure test event. I change it to like five or something that's not even. We save this and we test it again. Body is even, it's set the false. Okay, so this is working in both cases. I'll change this back to two and we'll save that. Uh, so now we have a working Lambda. We know it's working. Uh, let's go ahead and hook this up to our API gateway. This code as is will fail. Um, we'll need to come back and make a small change to it. But to keep things simple, I want to kind of take it step by step uh, and kind of show you what's going on and why it's not working. So back inside the API gateway here, uh, we'll choose our Lambda function. I'll keep it in US East 1. Yours may be different or you can change it, but I set that there. Uh, they can then change the Lambda function to be the is even value. Make sure Lambda proxy integration is turned on. Um, post method, Lambda function, proxy turned on, select your Lambda. Okay, create the function or create the method. Now we have a method set up um, to this Lambda. We'll deploy this again to the test stage. And now that we have it deployed, we'll go to test roots is even post, and that will have this URL uh, slash is even. We'll copy this, go back to our API client, change this to be our route, change it to post, go to the body, add a JSON body, um, just passing in value and two. Uh, let's go ahead now and send this this will fail but we'll send it and now we see we have missing authentication token um okay so the reason why for that's happening is because we have this content type set to application slash json for now i'm going to delete this and send it and now we're getting this uh, internal server error uh, we didn't set it up to accept that that header you probably should but in this example to keep things simple we're not going to worry about that um, but if we send our JSON right now, we're getting this internal server error showing up um, when we return this. Now, why is that? Well, if we go back to our logs, we go to our monitor tab in our Lambda, and then we click on View CloudWatch Logs, we can get access to our logs. We then will have this uh, 53 right here. This should be it. Um, maybe it's the last one. Now, let's find the one with the error message in it right here no that's not it um oh right here okay yep so it's right here so we have this int argument must be string bytes like object or real number not none type um on this int number so why is that happening go back to our code and you'll see that we're getting our number here we're then passing it into this int here to cast it to an int on line six so this number value on line four is to come back as none now, why is that? Well, if we print out our event, you can see what our event looks like and why this isn't working right now. So if I deploy those changes, come back to my client, and then hit this route again, we'll get a 502 again. Go back to our logs. We have this new log showing, we'll click on it. Uh, and then right above our error, we will have this dictionary here of the event. So you can see what's in here. We have our resource, we have our method, our path, Post uh, different headers, uh, keep going down. You'll eventually you'll find somewhere on here. Let's just do a control F for it. Uh, for body right here. Okay, so we have a body that has a value of two. So we're correctly passing into the body into the body. We just need to parse this correctly and then pull this value out to actually use it. So we need to change the code to do that. So instead of doing this event.get, I'm gonna go ahead and just comment out these two lines. But instead of doing that, what we need to do instead is we need to get the body, then load it into a Python um, types instead of JSON. So we do a body equals json.load s, which will load uh, load the, the JSON string into uh, a Python types. We can do event.get body. And also, just in case you're not familiar, you can tell it's in JSON because we have all these extra characters here. Um, because of that, we, um, we know we need to go ahead and load it into Python before we can actually use it like a dictionary in Python. So now we've loaded that dictionary. 
um, or that body JSON from the dictionary into this body variable. We can then get the number from here. So we can do number equals body dot get. And we can use dot get because now it's in Python, not JSON. We can get the value. And now with those changes, we should now get our body our number from the body correctly. So then go back to our API client. We'll then send this request. And now you get is even is true. And then if I actually if I go back here just for testing purposes, we'll do five or no nine this time again. We'll send that. We get false. We send 12. We get true. So now this is working uh like it was before with uh, true or false values showing after we hit this route. And now you can see we've added two routes to our API, um, a get value with a get, and an is even is a post. And now we set up a very basic API. Of course, we still need to set up better headers, and we probably want to add an authorization and different uh, API keys and whatever else. But hopefully, if this will help you get started with building APIs and adding methods. Of course, from here, we can continue add a, po a put, a post, um, a delete, or any other methods you want to add, all in the same sort of process of creating your resource path right here, and then creating methods on that resource. But that's where we'll stop at for this video. If you have any questions, let me know. But thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.